Would God have preferred instead to have healed Babylon? Let's look at our reading today. It's at Jeremiah chapter 51, verses 9 and 10. We would have healed Babylon, but she is not healed. Forsake her and let us go, every one to his own country, for her judgment reaches to heaven and is lifted up to the skies. The Lord has revealed our righteousness. Come and let us declare in Zion the work of the Lord our God. So the answer is, of course God would have liked to heal Babylon. Babylon is the manifestation of human rebellion. Read about it back there in Genesis 11. Instead of going the way God wants, they're going to make themselves, it says, a city, make themselves a tower, make themselves a name. And that's sort of the human rebellion line, you know, going right there. And then we come back down to Babylon in the time of Jeremiah right here. And the book of Daniel shows several of God's interventions. God's working for the heart of King Nebuchadnezzar from Daniel chapter 1 to Daniel chapter 4. Many interventions there. And finally, when we get to chapter 4, Nebuchadnezzar himself proclaims that the God of heaven is sovereign over, over everything. So God was working to win the heart of this pagan king. Back there in Daniel chapter 2, remember that story. Uh, the wise, All the wise men and soothsayers, when, the, when their lives were saved from destruction because of the intervention of God's people and God for Daniel, they should have sort of reviewed their situation and revisited and said, you know, maybe maybe doing all this chicken entrails and uh, worshiping of Marduk, maybe that's not the real stuff. But they didn't. And we see God continuing to work for these pagan rulers, even over here in Daniel chapter 6. With Daniel in the lion's den, you can read that famous story there and see how God was working on the heart of that pagan king. But sadly, these people don't want to be released. They just, it's more convenient. It's more convenient to just stay in Babylon and eat Babylonian food, think Babylonian thoughts, have a Babylonian worldview, and serve yourself at the same time. That's just more convenient for people, you know, in a moment, in, in, in the wrong way of thinking. It just seems to be more convenient. Let's do it all the world's way. So Babylon won't let her captives leave so God just calls them out. You need to leave. You need to leave now. Destruction is imminent. And if you're going to get out, now's the time. And when you go over and read Revelation chapter 18, you see that the destruction of Babylon is ultimate and final. There's no more Babylon after Revelation 18. And notice in verse 9, this verb stuff here. It says, forsake her and go. Go out. Get out now. So there's an activity there. Christianity isn't just kind of supinely riding along and hoping that in the end you're in the kingdom. You've got to do some stuff. There's some activity we need to be engaged in. That's what the Bible teaches. The Christian experience is not a passive ride. And verse 10 shows us that the righteousness of the people is revealed as they're, as they're accepting God's righteousness, as they're actively leaving Babylon. So you have to go. You, ha you have to be healed. Let's pray together. Dear Father in heaven, you're working in many ways to reach us and to heal us, but a lot of times we've been slow on the uptake. Oh, please, Lord, help us to be uh, available to you. Help us to be able to see your leading, your providential leadings and guidings. Help us to advance even just one step or one half at a step at a time. Help us to go where you'd have us to go and do what you'd have us to do. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for being our God who takes us and heals us and restores us. Lord, in Jesus' name we give praise to you. Amen. So, yes, God would have preferred to heal Babylon. He certainly made many attempts to bring things to where the people could, could turn to him. But sadly, mostly, they just kept to their own plans and agendas, and doubtless many were destroyed in the actual overthrow of Babylon. May it not be so for you and I and our loved ones who still haven't found the way to the cross. God be with you today.